Hi, I'm Curtis Heimerl. I'm a grad student here at UC Berkeley in the Technology and Infrastructure for Emerging Regions group. Hi, my name is Kaishu Foley and I'm a postdoc here at the TIER group. Um, so uh, we're here to try to share with you a little bit of research that we've been working on, try to get more feedback and, and hopefully some discussion on the topic. Um, this project is, uh, is known as the Village Base Station, and this particular piece of it is a low power piece. So basically what we're trying to do is, is invent the lowest power GSM cell phone tower that we can. And so we have a strategy that I'd like to share with you, and, uh, and we'll do that. So this is our Range Network's 5150 GSM cell phone tower. Um, this is running in our office. Uh, if you know anything about software radios and software base stations, uh, this is the radio, this is the power amplifier, and this over here is the CPU. Um, it's a pretty simple unit. It's actually pretty cheap already for a GSM base station. It's about $10,000 in order of magnitude less uh, than what you'd normally pay for. And here we go to a WhatsApp that we have plugged into it. So it draws about 23 and a half watts. This is with the power amplifier off. Uh, unfortunately, when the power amplifier is off, it's there's there's almost no coverage range. And so, if you actually ran this base station at full power, which I just turned the power amplifier on, uh, you'll see it's about 70 watts. So 45 watts is just the power amplifier. This is a 10 watt amplifier. There's a lot of a lot of waste. Um, the basic thing that we've done to reduce the power of this base station even more is to introduce an idle mode. Basically, the base station can turn this power amplifier off programmatically, which I'll do right now, to save power. And so, as you can see right here, the power is, of course, directed right back down to where it was. Um, so, this idle mode allows us to save power at night or uh, other times where perhaps the base station isn't in use. So we've developed a couple mechanisms to allow users to control the power on the base station in order to save power and reduce the power load for the system. Okay, so given that we're turning off the power amplifier to save approximately 70% of the power, you might ask, what are the consequences to turn the power amplifier off? Um, in the GSM standard, the way that it works is that the base station is constantly transmitting, and this is because they expected these base stations to be in areas with a lot of good, high-quality power, like cities. Um, not rural areas with, with, with bad power. So that base station sits there transmitting in your handset, your mobile phone, you turn it on, what it does is it scans and it finds the base stations and, and, and camps there. So if you turn off the power amplifier, what your handset will see is that the base station has disappeared and you'll get no bars and no signal. Um, so this is a problem, obviously. The handset now, you're incapable of communicating. Um, so there's two different ways to, to attack this. First off, there's the question of calls or communications that are coming into the phone. And there's the question of calls that are coming out of the phone um, when the base station is in an idle mode. So first, we'll talk about what to do for uh, the incoming calls. So incoming calls are actually conceptually pretty simple. Basically, all we need to do is recognize that a call is coming in uh, and then turn on the power amplifier because we have programmatic access. Then wait approximately 30 seconds and make the connection. So uh, what I'm going to do here, let me see if I can show you my screen. Um, now I can't see what it's seeing, so hopefully it'll work. We're going to turn the power amplifier off. So you can see over here, uh, the power amplifier is, is no longer lit. Um, and then make a call. So we've got the Akiga soft phone here. It's going to dial one of my phones. So that immediately turns the power amplifier off. And now the system just waits. So the system is waiting uh, approximately 30 seconds. Uh, hoping that during that 30 seconds all the handsets will camp. Uh, what we're going to build is a system that actually detects when a handset camps and, and makes the call then. So right now it's waiting for the handset to camp. Uh, we've got this Android phone here. It's already camped on our tier network. So it calls me back. I accept the call and now it's going to try to reconnect it to the phone. Hopefully this will work. And you can see I got an incoming call here, even though we just had the power on the power fire off. Uh, I'm not going to accept the call because it'll get really echoey. So 
what we plan to do is basically turn the power amplifier off if there's been no activity on the base station for like five minutes. And then any time a user calls in, we'll turn the power back on, reconnect, make the call. So it adds about 30 seconds of latency to an incoming call at the savings of about 70% of the power. I think it's a big win. So, as you can see, the incoming call is pretty conceptually simple. Uh, outgoing calls are significantly harder. Obviously, the handset at this point has no idea uh, that there's a base station around. Uh, the trick here that we that we leverage is the fact that even though the power amplifier is off, the radio is still on. And so, actually, the base station could hear the handset if we could just sort of nudge the handset into sending a communication. Um, we've implemented this in Osmocom BB. Basically, there's a special command you can send to tell the handset to sort of just chirp on a specific frequency, which will wake up uh, the base station and turn the power amplifier on, exactly the same as we did uh, for the incoming call, in which case then the handset will immediately camp and the call can go through. We're expecting like a five second delay um, on that particular communication. Unfortunately, those of you who have a reasonable amount of experience in the field will know that it's not a simple thing to go through and change a whole bunch of handsets. So the other alternative we have is this thing we're calling the garage door opener. Uh, we need a better name, we're working on that. The basic idea here is to build a small circuit which just does that chirp. It's not a GSM handset, it doesn't need to know anything more than exactly what frequency to just send a burst. So uh, this is something that Kashif has built. You can see it right here. This is the, the, the diagram for it. Um, all it does is that you press a button and it sends that frequency burst on that specific uh, frequency to, to, to wake up the base station. So you can see right here, the base station is off uh, and, and we're gonna have Kasha uh, plug in the unit which will immediately cause it to, to send that chirp. And over here, now that, that light is on, the base station, the power amplifier is now on. So with this, this tool, basically we can build something that's uh, akin to um, uh, uh, a phone booth. You can walk up, press a button, and your cell phone will suddenly have coverage. And um, you know, these things are pretty cheap. We're expecting them to be about $10 um, per unit. So not, not, and, and that's at, at small scale production. Um, just a couple thousand units. So um, that's our solution to the uplink problem. So then we get that coverage, it pops up, handset camps, you're able to make your call just from pressing that button. So we think this basic idea has the potential to dramatically impact rural telecommunications. Um, basically power is one of the driving problems for cell phone towers in, in rural areas. Our, our, our research, we have some contacts in rural Pakistan who run their base stations uh, eight hours a day only with diesel power. Um, and being able to drop power load 70% or more if you're using a larger base station. This is not a big unit, it's a 10 watt unit. The range sells 50 watt units, in which case you're going to be saving 95% of the power. Um, is, is potentially a very large impact. I mean, these uh, garage door openers um, are going to have the exact same power amplifier as, as a handset, and so they'll have the exact same range. So it's a, we're hoping a very simple system. You just walk up, press this button, you get coverage. And since our field research says that uh, what users really want is emergency coverage. They want coverage for situations that uh, they generally don't predict. And it's not like they use these phones very often for that case, but it's one of the driving reasons to get a phone is if there's an emergency, you're able to make a call. And if you do any of the static um, coverage schemes like that just eight hours a day uh, business or what you see in, in India where they just turn off power in, in areas for, for, for sets of the day, you lose that emergency property. And, and that's a, a large detriment to a large number of users. Um, so we're building this out. Right now we're, we're looking for places to put it. We've got some contacts, uh, obviously, Kashif's from Pakistan. We're looking, uh, looking there. It's a little rougher for me. Um, uh, we've got some contacts in Ecuador. Uh, but that's, that's the next step, is to get this thing out in the field and see how users really deal with the, the button methodology and, and whether that, that maps well. So um, I hope this made sense. I hope that uh, you're more informed about what we're doing here at Berkeley. And if you have any commentary or directions or suggestions of reading for us, I would be happy to receive it.